we're on easy street and it feels so sweet because the world is but a treat when you're on easy street welcome to the easy street radio show hosted by rob scribner grab a cup of coffee and let's get started this video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available on Amazon right now. Hello everyone and welcome to Easy Street. This is episode 48. Welcome to the show. Um, this is not as bad a show as you think it's going to be. <laughs> it's actually joking around. I, well, before we get going, I want to remind you, you can find Easy Street on Good Talk Radio. Uh, which is a 24 7 uh, radio station we own and easy streets one of many shows that plays on it and some great music too uh, you can find all the places you can find easy street in our description below and uh, uh, so before i get started here i need to make sure i um, uh, um, clarify that i'm teasing someone actually someone i really 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 appreciate um, and it's Marfugo News. And the reason being is he did something today that actually kind of like, I can't believe he did that. And so this is my show going, I can't believe he did that. <laughs> so what I'm talking about is, you know, with all this virus stuff, and all that stuff, uh, we're starting to open businesses, which is great. And uh, some states are ahead of others. And uh, one of the things that just floors me is these governors and mayors that are advocating for uh, telling on people if they break the rules. Now, I can tell you right now, and, and you can't argue with me, that in a lot of circumstances, you're going to be under the six-foot rule. And there's going to be businesses that may have more than 10 people in it. And it's their livelihood. And there's going to be restaurants now where we may be sitting closer to people than normal. And a lot of us, is that's our free will. That's our human life that we want to go out and live. And so today, <laughs> a little video came out from the Marfogo News that was showing that a lot of people in airplanes were sitting close to one another. Uh, duh. <laughs> It's an airplane. It's like we've got to function. Now I notice uh, during the little two minute uh, thing he did, a lot of people had masks on and stuff, but those people knew they're getting on an airplane. Those people knew they'll be close to one another. Those people have choices to clean off their area, to put masks on. Uh, heck, they could put full armor on if they had to, who knows. Uh, jumpsuits, whatever they needed to do to get onto that airplane, but the, that was their choice. And so seeing that video to me was like snitching. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm saying this because first of all, the Marfugo folks are uh, equal. Um, they're balanced people. They don't lose it and all that stuff. And they do appreciate a second opinion. And just by me doing this video, I'm being just as bad. I'm snitching on him. Um, and that's my point on this show is the new liberal kind of thing of uh, it's all about me. You offend me. Everything's racist. All that stuff is one of the biggest things we're all fighting because it's a bunch of BS labeling all the time. But the last thing we need now while we're trying to open up our country is little snitches. Uh, I have news for you. The live under the standards of what they're trying to do to open up businesses is virtually impossible. I, think about it. Can you really be six feet away from everybody all the time? Are there going to be times that you may not have a mask on and you happen to just stumble across people and actually be within a closer realm? Is it going to happen accidentally? And if you do, do you want me snitching on you? Or your neighbor has company over, their kids finally come over to visit their parents? Are you going to snitch on them too? And then turn around and do it yourself? If people are in the beach now, 
you're snitching. If people are in a restaurant too close, are you going to snitch on them? Not even worried about what recourses those kind of people um, might get from that and could hurt them and their employees, which in turn hurts the region. Are you going to be a snitch? Nobody liked them in high school. <laughs> we didn't like them in elementary. Nobody likes them at all. So don't start out that way. Now, um, there's things like in these shows we do, we, we expose things that we see, I guess in a sense, all kinds, all different kinds of news that are kind of snitching. But this one happened to be against American Airlines. And I don't have a preference of which airlines is which. Um, and I know I've got to actually use, uh, take an airplane here in a couple of weeks uh, up to Oregon. And it'll be on Alliance on little airplanes. And there will be people sitting next to me. Now I can choose to wipe down my seat, my table, wear a mask, do everything I can be uh, do to be... Um, self-sufficient and and and, and uh, trying to be safe and trying not to catch covid and that's my choice or i can just show up like i am right now with no mask on don't care about wipe down whatever and just I, that's the way i choose to live but out of respect for people that are sitting next to me and stuff like that yeah i would wear a mask yes i'd wipe down the area and i do hand sanitizer no problem I'm just happy to see the country opening up. But I know there's going to be a handful of you guys who are going to make it miserable for everyone. You'll be snitching on this and snitching on that. You'll call 911 because, you know, four people are ta sitting in a circle in the grass in a park. Don't do it. Please, I beg of you because these rules are impossible. People are meant to be social. We do gather in groups. Churches gather. Movie theaters gather. Rock concerts. Non-rock concerts. Uh, game shows you watch on TV. Gather. What about all those actors that are making movies? When they start making movies again, they're going to be grouped together. They're not going to do social distancing on The Walking Dead. <laughs> you cannot live by the standards that they're trying to push. You can do your best, but there will be exceptions. There will be times you cannot do it. And you know what? Who gives a crap? We're out. We're free. We're doing business again. The economy is moving. <clears throat> now, areas that you should be concerned, we know, we now know where the most susceptible people are. So we still have to be vigilant about, say, our nursing homes and our assisted livings. We have to be vigilant at hospitals still. There's a lot of places where there's people that are susceptible to this, I actually could die from it. But the snitch, no. To report an organization like a hospital or, or a, a senior center where they're under strict scrutiny, then we're all responsible to see that they do good business practices, but not by snitching, by constructively working with them and saying, people, you really need to be doing this. No, I'm not going to call no authorities and stuff. But if you're not going to comply, then maybe we'll talk about it. But to be uh, your own independent policeman, forget it. So I'm teasing Marfugles and, and all the other groups out there that start showing these uh, places where, oh, these guys didn't have masks on. Or these are, stop it. <clears throat> Just stop it. And I know a lot of us mean well, and some of us are doing it in gist. But even when we do it in gist and, and making fun and like, whoa, look at this, um, we're actually snitching. Don't be a snitch, please. It's hard enough to go through life without you getting into my face and 
by the way, six feet. <laughs> uh, we don't need that. And you may actually start doing it accidentally. And actually, I'm, I'm, I'll bet money on the video uh, when it was being made, it really wasn't thought out that way of being, oh, I'm snitching on these people because American Airlines actually put a, a, a letter out saying, we're going to do our best to be social distancing and stuff. But they should have put in there. But in reality, airplanes are built close together. All we can do is our best. That's good enough for me. Tell you the truth, I wouldn't care. Um, the only people I really want to have a mask on or something is if somebody came on with a cold. And I don't even want to catch their cold, let alone COVID or the flu or whatever other they have. It'd be nice that they wore uh, something on their face. But I'm not a wimp either. I can only hope if I caught it, I'll be strong enough to get through it. But that's my life. If you want to stay bottled up in your house, fine. But I have news for you. This unemployment that has the extra $600 is over in July. That's coming pretty fast. So you cannot hide out. You can't keep protesting. I don't want to go back to work. We have to function. We have had much worse situations in, in pandemics than this in the past. And it never shut down our country. It's been a great awakening. We all did our best. But we need to function as a country again. So be it. And I know there's a lot of you guys going, hey, I'm not ready to go back to work. Well, don't go back to work then, I guess. But I have news for you. You need to know this. That extra $600 you're getting is going to go away soon, very fast. And those jobs you won't go back to, someone else will take it. So uh, put on your big boy pants. <laughs> Quit snitching. Get back to work. Do the best job you can to be safe. And realize nobody's perfect here. And the last thing we need is a little snitchers. We love our dogs, and yet there is pet waste. We know we have to pick it up, but can we make it convenient? Can they make a bag that's large enough for all size dogs? Can they make it wide? Can they make it deeper? Can they put handles on it so it's so easy to reverse and tie? That bag has been created. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. They're eco-friendly, strong, and biodegradable. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags were designed for you, the dog owner. But are they cost effective? Yes, they're under $10. Go to Amazon.com right now or RangerRobPoopyBags.com and get a box today. Our bags are high quality and lemon scented. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. It's what we asked for. Make picking up dog waste easy with Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. And we are back in a whole nother galaxy. And by the way, we get the chance to uh, uh, check out the Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Uh, yes, we manufacture them. Um, they're great bags and that really helps out the uh, show and our radio station along with our channel and everything else we do. We do a lot of stuff. Anyway, uh, we do appreciate it. Or go to goodtalkradio.com and actually uh, we could be tickled pink if you gave us a donation too. It helps this station, helps everything we do. And uh, I guess I still want to go back to alternative news people and, uh, and, and let you know how much I appreciate them and why they're important. Um, the Marfugo News is out there, the um, Blaze TV. Even Fox, sometimes they aren't, they're more political, but there's a whole bunch of organizations out there. And basically a lot of times our local news is not that bad. And uh, I like it when they just tell you the news and don't give you, give you their opinion. Kind of nice, huh? Anyway, we're going to have to really rely on them. And 
Uh, oh, another one that just came to mind, which really ticks me off, but she's still online at least, is uh, Lisa Haven. Uh, there is an advocate. Oh my gosh. Um, she uh, has strong beliefs and tries to dig up uh, uh, factual information of stuff that gets kind of swept under the, the rug, along with Mar Fugel and the rest of those people. And uh, it's amazing. Uh, and Paul Begley, even, even though he's a little bit on the crazy side, um, keeps you on your toes, alert, and allows you to read between a line when you're stuck listening to a political news station like primetime. Um, they're going to be important. And uh, eventually, we're losing so many of our freedoms. Uh, more and more of those folks are going to drop off uh, YouTube. And I see many of them are all using some new uh, alternative uh, platforms. Uh, understandable, um, where they can s speak uh, honestly and openly. And, uh, and, and also those who call in the shows and stuff like that can speak openly and honestly without abbreviating and using special signs of keywords we can't say. And it's, it's insane. So I salute all those people a lot. And it's not something I, I guess I could do, but I'm not one of those ones that wants to dig in the internet all day and, and look for the, uh, I mean, it's hard work what they're doing and finding these articles and monitoring uh, newspapers and news agencies outside the United States, along with our own stuff, and uh, bringing that stuff to us uh, because it kind of gets hidden, it kind of passes on by. And without people like them to point it out to us and say, hey, you may have been, uh, been hearing this, but have you seen this? And uh, we're adults. And just like the module I was doing before, um, the snitching thing um, it really comes down to is, first of all, be accountable for yourself. That's the number one rule. And and don't expect me, don't expect the government or uh, television shows or whatever to be accountable for the shows you're watching and the things you're reading. Be accountable by either don't read the article, don't watch the station, don't watch the movie turn the station you're a big boy and big girl you can do it be accountable don't expect others to be accountable for you if you're offended turn the station if you think something's racist turn the station if you think everybody's uh, uh like um us and also we always tease the liberals a little bit but um I'd be the first one. In fact, I have on my radio station several folks that are more on the liberal side, and I love it. But they do it very professionally and uh, and can counter debate other folks without calling them names and labeling them, and that's good stuff. And my salute to um, Mar Fogel, to Lisa Haven, to the Blaze, all these other folks that are trying their best to get the truth out to us and yet they're being beaten on people are snitching on them <laughs> because they're offended instead of turning the station or not listening they try to hurt others and they don't even really realize the implications of the chain reaction that this that they they create if you haven't learned about chain reaction just look at this shutdown all of a sudden we're saying there could be a water shortage because there's a shortage of CO2. How the hell did that happen? Or we're going to, there's no meat. Why is, but there's tons of meat. I mean, it, the levels didn't change and all of a sudden we don't have meat. What the hell happened? Chain reaction. Less demand, suddenly we get too much meat. And then now we get problems with the processing plants. Chain reaction. Cars buying cars, buying things. Now everybody's been uh, laid off or furloughed, the whole works. And you say, well, everything ought to go back to normal. It's not going to happen. There was a chain reaction. You haven't seen it all. You haven't seen that our housing market's going to be hurting. The auto market's going to hurt. Airplane business, building airplanes, all that's going to hurt. Not just that business, but the people that work at it. 
And then also the, the regions that they work out of, the cities, the tax incomes, the whole that chain reaction. So when you go out to hurt someone by snitching or being a tattletale and possibly getting them uh, shut down for a while or something, you're not only hurting them, first you're being a snitch, so you're hurting yourself. You're hurting those employees. You're hurting that city. You're hurting your state. And the patrons that love those businesses just because they made a mistake. We've got to stop doing that kind of stuff. We've got to take a few years steps back. I'm sorry. But this new way of life is not sustainable. Being constantly offended, constantly labeling people and things is not sustainable because we're all guilty of something. I mean, I even look at this show and I play it back and I go, his or her, but I didn't say it, or I didn't say he, she, or I didn't say, but the gist was I was talking to everyone. Are you going to read between those lines or are you going to label me? Yet I have great appreciation for diversity and all that stuff. You just chose to be offended. I give you the benefit of the doubt when you're talking to me. I ask you to give me the benefit of the doubt that I mean well. And, he, he, and even with Trump and stuff, you go, I'm, I know what he meant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why be so acute? Why be so... Uh, please, people, stop. T take a deep breath. Realize what's important to these people. Why this is happening. Why people are protesting. Why people want to go back to work. They can't pay their bills. They have children and dependents. We have a mother-in-law that's in a assisted living. We can't even go see her. My, my wife, which is, is her mother, cannot go and visit her mother. And if her mother was ill, which she did go in the hospital for a little bit and had to come back out, could not go see her, which it was harder and heck to even try to call into a hospital to find out how she was doing. She's locked up in a room. And yes, there's people that go in and out of there. There are nurses and stuff. But oh my gosh, how many thousands of seniors that are insisted living or living um, or senior homes that are cut off? You have to ask those those people too. Is like, do you want to be cut off from the world so we can protect you? Or can we do a few things that maybe we can have Sherry show up there. They take her temperature, put all kinds of clothing on her and a, and a uh, mask and, uh, and, and let her go visit her mother. This is insane, people. Nobody deserves to be treated like that. We can't treat every senior as a bubble boy. <laughs> Sorry. We need to live. And I bet you a lot of those seniors will say, hey, I'd rather die than not be able to see my family. And yet, if with, with precautions and being careful, there's no reason why they can't have a visitor or at least maybe one special family member. But oh no, it's zero. Do they have, do they mean well? Yes. Is it right? No. You may as well lock those people up. You may as well just put them in a cell, no windows, no nothing, and give them a television. That is what we're doing to a lot of folks. And then those who snitch and tattletale and trying to make this hard, is that really how you want all of us to live in the future? Being afraid to go out? being afraid my neighbors are going to tell on me. Think this stuff through. Be a human. Maybe the golden rule might apply here. Do unto others as you want them to do unto you. Do you think through when you do actions like that, snitching and telling and 
and, and making her miserable and labeling people and call them racist and all that stuff. Do you think through what that does to the other side? Just curious. I love to hear comments below about all this stuff. And yeah, tease me because I was tattling on a more frugal, but I won't be doing that in the future because luckily I, I know him well enough to realize that he thinks a lot like we do and a lot like you do. And those that watch more frugal and all those other folks are the ones that are saying, hey, stop this labeling. Let's joke. Poor comedians can't even do comedian their jobs because somebody in the audience is offended. Hey, don't go. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, it's like the late night. The late night's gotten so political, bashing Trump all the time. So instead of me just sending letters and, and all that stuff, my choice is don't watch them. It wasn't that hard. I'll watch something else. <laughs> I can affect, you know, if, if they're really bad and the Americans all just turn the station uh, then their ratings go down and maybe they'll go, maybe we shouldn't do so many political hits on certain candidates and stuff. Maybe we just do jokes like we used to, like Leno used, used to do. They could still make jokes about even political people, but they did it tactfully. Johnny Carson, all those people, they knew how to do it. Even Letterman, he was probably the, the big swing. Anyway, guys. I salute all those people that do alternative news. I'm grateful for the work you do. I'm grateful for being able to watch you when I can. It angers me when I know you're being fighting an uphill battle. I fight the same battle. Not like you do, but we all are fighting the same battle of freedom of speech and all the other liberties that are under attack right now. Everybody on both sides need to realize how important all those things are to them. So maybe uh, the Democrats feel like they're at a disadvantage because of Republicans in the, but, but the, the, the things will turn. Do you want the Republicans to do the same thing that you're doing to them? They will. An eye for an eye. So think through all this. How would I react if they were doing that to me? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Food for thought. Love to hear your comments below. Okay, guys, that's getting towards the end of the show. It's amazing how fast the time goes. I want to thank you very much for listening. I want to thank the Mark Fugel folks for um, allowing me to speak my mind and, and, and still be friends and still uh, understand uh, uh they could do that to us in any time they wanted to because they're responsible and accountable people. Anyway, uh, uh, the things we talked about is really about being human, about being accepting, to be accountable for our own actions and uh, don't expect others to do, be your, be accountable for yourself. Don't expect others to do it for you. Um, Realize that this is a country of freedom and liberties. And uh, a lot of us are going to fight tooth and nail to keep that. So if you don't think you're going to change, be ready. Because uh, <laughs> we will constantly fight for our freedoms. So guys, uh, thanks again for listening to Easy Street. Don't forget you can find us on Good Talk Radio. Don't forget to maybe check out the Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Maybe go to goodtalkradio.com. Slip us a little bit of a tip. Uh, we'd appreciate it. Um, times are tough. Uh, accounting, um, advertising income for everybody on YouTube and stuff is down, down, down. So uh, uh, this stuff costs dough. And it's the same for us as it is for Marfugo and the rest of them. So uh, if you can help us out, we appreciate it. Guys, have a great day. I look forward to knowing that your life is getting to some kind of normal. I hope everybody makes it through this and gets back on track. And be safe. Until next time, bye now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.